Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. My name's Rebecca. If you are new here, you're very, very welcome. And if you are a regular, then welcome back. Now we're in week 41 and it's the second week in October and that means we're working with a word prompt this week. And if you've been watching over on Instagram, you'll know that our prompt is MEND. Now we're going to be using our woven stitches to explore some really traditional techniques this week everything you need is listed in the description below so check that out gather all your bits and pieces and let's get stitching so i thought we'd keep it really simple this week and haven't really got any design ideas because i wanted to focus on visible mending i've got just a range of threads that i'm going to use i've got lots of pearl cottons i've got this cotton thread from Natalie Stewart. I'll put a link to her shop in the description below. It's lovely, it's sort of variegated and I don't often use colours like this. I thought it would be a good opportunity to dig that out and make use of it. Then I've got two linen threads here. This one's quite chunky and it's a bleached linen so it's just off white and this one is a natural linen it's a lot finer and it is an absolute dream to stitch with it's like butter and then i've just got a few tiny scraps of japanese yarn dye fabric and if you ever see this for sale you can pick it up on etsy it's just lovely it's 100 percent cotton and i love it because it is most often than not the same on the front and the back because it's the thread that is dyed rather than a pattern being printed on so i've just got some little scraps of that to make use of and i'm going to be working on this sort of peachy beige felt and i've sort of worked out a rough arrangement for my pieces so i'm just sort of planning it out i want to keep them inside the border that i've drawn so that when i trim my square back uh, don't end up chopping off any stitches and i just want a sort of rough sense of the arrangement i'm going to make so i'm going to go for something along those lines but our prompt is mend and so we need to cause some damage so i've got here my seam ripper and this might seem like a strange thing to be doing but we're actually going to cause some damage to the fabrics so i'm just going to pop in my seam ripper and put some tears and pull the fabric apart like that and create some little holes that we can then mend now if you've got anything that is damaged or if you've got some old jeans with a hole in them or a shirt that has got a hole in it you can always use that i'm just punching some holes in this one with the point of my scissors i wanted some rounder holes as well as some tears so i'm just sort of jabbing at that one and uh, i'm just gonna use whatever tools i've got to rough up these fabrics a little bit but yeah, if you've got any damaged clothes that you don't wear anymore and you want to cut out the damaged part and use it on this piece, then that would be a good thing to do. Or you could, another way of distressing fabric is to actually use sandpaper or a cheese grater. Um, that gives a really lovely distress look. So I've made some long strips there and I'm just tearing that one apart, laying them back down in the arrangement that I'd planned and then I'm just going to put some pins in place so that I don't forget. Now we need to start trying some visible mending and I thought I'd start with this hole here. I've got some beige pearl cotton here. So the first thing I need to do is just stitch it down and so I'm just going to put some running stitch around the edge. And we're going to use a darning technique. So effectively, this is needle weaving. But if I was actually darning, I would be putting my warp threads really close together. But we are creating something of a textile art piece. So I'm going to be a bit freer with this. And I've just put a small running stitch in there. And then I'm just going to put a long stitch that goes across the width of the tear. 
and then add another couple of running stitches the other side. And then I can just come back the other way and add another row of stitches just below it. So I'm trying to keep them fairly in line with each other but the tear you can see there is sort of going diagonal so it won't be completely even. But we just work backwards and forwards like that putting in our warp threads and just making sure we've got that long stitch that covers the gap. So that's all my warp threads and you can see they're nicely spaced out and I've tried to do that partly so that I can do something more interesting with my weft now. So I've got some uh, cream linen thread and I've just brought it up just slightly off that little patch and I'm using the eye end of the needle to just weave under and over all the way down that first line of little stitches and I've got a, quite a big gap there so I'm going to put in an additional stitch so just a little running stitch with my white thread there and then I can come up again a little bit closer to the next beige thread and just weave the rest of the way down. So this one's going to be a bit of a combination of running stitch and darning just to make something quite decorative because we don't want to totally cover the holes that we've made. We want to sort of make them part of the piece but we also want to use our woven stitches to make something quite decorative. So now I'm just coming back the other way and again I've started quite far away from those beige warp threads so I've put a little stitch in there and then I can use my needle. I'll use the eye end because it saves me picking up the fabric or damaging the thread. So I'm just weaving a little way going under over the reverse of what I've just done on the first row. Now all of the stitches I'm going to use today are in our stitch tutorial video for October and I will link that at the top of the screen. Some of them are a little bit tricky. This is one of the easier ones and I explain it in much more detail in that video. So we're just sort of playing around with our running stitches. So you can see there that I've sort of combined weaving with running stitch and I'm just going to work backwards and forwards like that all the way across that piece so that the hole is covered. So there we go. That's my first bit of needle weaving. I do worry that it's a little bit pale and I might need to come back in with something darker. A little bit later but we'll see how the rest of our panel shapes up. I've got these round holes down here and I thought we could do some woven wheels for this one and I'm going to start, let's start with this apricot peachy thread. I'm going to start by just stitching it down again so this is just running stitch all the way around the edge just to hold it in place and doing this means I can take the pins out gradually and I'm going to start by putting a half wheel on the outside edge so I've got a hole there just at the edge and I've just used my circle template to put a semicircle around it and now I can bring my thread up at the center point and put in some spokes and this is going to be a spider's web wheel so it doesn't matter how many spokes I put in because each one is going to be worked on so I'm just putting in those straight lines working from the edge to the center point of the circle so 
so now I've got my spokes in and I can bring my needle up at the edge again just inside the first spoke and I'm taking my needle back over that first spoke and under two so again I go back over the second spoke and forward under two and back over the third spoke forward under two back over the fourth spoke and forward under two so we're always going back over one and forward under two and again the stitch guide covers this stitch in far more detail now when I've worked all my way around I've gone under that last spoke and back over it and I've taken my needle back through to the back and then I can come back up on the other side of the wheel just outside that first row of wraps that we've just done so again I'm going back over the first spoke and then forward under two back over the second spoke forward under two and we just keep working like this working our way round to the end and then going back through the felt and up again at the start and that's our spider's web wheel you can see the variegations in the thread there and you might be able to see i've left some of the spokes exposed because i quite like the fact that the mechanics of the stitch are on show so when i iron that circle away it will i think look really fun so i thought we could do a woven wheel now and i've just got my circle template again to draw a circle around that larger hole at the center i don't want it much bigger than the hole and for this one we need an odd number of spokes and the way i do it it's quite a large circle so i've marked in thirds there and then i'm separating each of those thirds into three by putting two more little markers in and that will give me nine in total and i thought we could use our natural linen for this so i brought it up at the edge of the wheel i'm just working out roughly where the center point is and i'm going to put in my nine spokes in the same way that i did with the spider's web wheel we've just done So that's all my spokes now and I can then bring my thread up at the middle and start working my way around the circle so I'm going under and then over under over and I just keep going round and round in circles like that and because we've got an odd number of spokes every time I pass my starting point my stitches are reversed so where I've gone under I then go over on the next pass and it just forms a lovely rosette almost to cover up our hole so now i'm working on this long tear down to the side and i've deliberately pinned it so that it's a little bit open at the bottom almost like a pair of trousers my starting point is to make a ladder because i thought it might be nice to do one of our band stitches our woven bands i'm going to do the diagonal woven band again this is in our stitch guide and the starting point for this stitch is to stitch a ladder so i'm just working backwards and forwards in a sort of zigzag doing a horizontal stitch one way take my needle through to the back then bring my needle up a little way below that and making a horizontal stitch back the other way and I just work all the way down my piece like that you can see I've just put in a running stitch around the edge there and got rid of the pins and now I'm using two colours for this so I've brought up my first colour just at the top of that first rung on the ladder and my second colour I'm using a sort of silvery grey I've brought up just above the second rung and then I take my first thread and slide it under the second rung of the ladder so this one is going to go under all the even numbered rungs and then 
my silver thread is going to go under rung number three and that's going to go under all the odd numbered rungs you get a much better view of this in the tutorial video so if you can't quite see what i'm doing i don't know why i was off the top of the screen there i think my threads were way too long um so apologies for that but we just alternate our threads and we want them always to come over the top so you can see there i'm taking my thread off to the left once i've taken it under the rung of the ladder i take the thread off to the left and that one's just needing to come back over the top so i'm just pulling it back over and then i can take it under so we're sort of twisting the threads together as well as weaving them under the rungs so that goes off to the left and my beige thread comes back in there and i had half a mind to leave a sort of tasseled edge at the bottom and i wasn't sure how it was going to look so i'm going to just cut off my threads and leave enough that i can take them back through to the back i actually decided that i didn't like it in the end so i do take them all back through to the back i'll show you the process to finish off the lines in a moment so now we start with our second color first so that silver gray is coming up on the top rung now next to the beige that i started with the first time and my beige thread just forgotten to knot it um my beige thread is coming up at the second rung and that's where the silver thread started the first time around and we just repeat the process so now my silver thread is going to go under my even numbered rungs so it's just going under rung number two there and I take it off to the left and then my beige thread goes under my odd numbered rungs so that's going under the third rung and off to the left and the silver comes over the top and under rung number four and the beige under rung number five and I just keep working like that in vertical rows alternating each time and so this is the effect that you get and I just love that sort of barely there colour and I thought about leaving the tassels and then just decided I didn't like it so all you do is take the thread back through to the back at the end of your row and secure it so you do get a lot of knots on the back but it is the back we won't see it and I'm just going to take the beige one through and I just finish off all those threads and that's our diagonal wave and band and I noticed that because my rungs weren't precisely evenly spaced there is a little bit of randomness that's crept in there in the way that the colours blend and I really like it um, I, I don't think I could make it happen deliberately I just love the way that that has turned out and I've also left a little bit of the tear above the band because I really like the fact that below it the fabric has got a gap in it and I just wanted to carry that on above and keep in mind that this is damaged fabric and we are patching it up so I'm bracing myself for something tricky because I'm going to have a go at an interwoven herringbone band so I am just going to stitch down that piece with running stitch all around the edge and I'm going to start off by putting in my herringbone stitch so I've got my white linen thread here and I make a mistake almost immediately that I then have to work out how to solve later so what I should be doing here is taking my needle underneath that stitch but I forgot so I'm just putting in <laughs> a straight herringbone stitch and it caused me all manner of problems so full disclosure I, this one really fries my brain and I clearly wasn't concentrating very hard so 
put in my first line of homebone stitch and then I did remember that I was supposed to lace it together this time so it, it's half right so I put in my first stitch going over that first herringbone band and then I'm sliding it underneath on the way back and this one I go through really really slowly and steadily and do it very very up close as well in my tutorial video so if you think this is too much just you could do some more needle weaving or you could do another one of the band stitches but I'm just weaving in my second line of herringbone stitch here so when I start interweaving it now with my beige thread you'll notice that I take quite a different approach and that is because that first line of herringbone stitch wasn't properly interwoven so don't try and mimic what I'm doing here do go and watch the tutorial because this isn't really the way to do it but I've fudged it a little bit to make it work so you it's all about making use of those crisscrossed threads so you sort of work over and under and sometimes you're working under two and over one and vice versa but we sort of weave down then we weave back up and then take our needle through the v at the top of the stitch So you can see me taking it through the V there and then we go over one and under two on the way back down and then we just repeat once you've got your rhythm it actually makes sense because the stitches sort of guide you then when you've worked all the way along wrapping the top part of the herringbone stitch you then work your way back wrapping the bottom so I'm just weaving around the crisscross right at the end of the line of stitches and then I'm coming back down weaving in and then going round the bottom V and then working back up I'm going under over under over there are four threads there now on the way back up so wove my way up and then there are three threads on the way down so I go over the first one and under the second two then back through the V and then there are four threads now and I go over under over under working back you can see me switching my needle around there so that I'm using the eye end because the threads are so close together it's really easy to sort of stitch through the threads that you've already sewn and it just makes everything a tangle and very difficult to fix if it goes wrong so that's what it's meant to look like at the end so we've got little tufts of the tear poking through there and I do love this stitch even though it absolutely blows my mind every time I do it um, I do really love it and it's worth persevering with because it's just such a beautiful stitch so I've just got this last hole here and I'm going to do another bit of needle weaving so very similar to what we've done before I'm just putting in some straight bars and then I'm just going to weave a different coloured thread under and over the bars that I've put in so this is less darning this time and more needle weaving I'm just purely weaving in and out So when you darn you start away from the hole and stitch through the fabric almost like taking a run up to the hole and then going over the hole but with this one I've purely just stitched across the hole in a in a sort of series of bars and I'm just weaving backwards and forwards and I think I've started in the middle there just because it's not quite even at the sides and so I've just try to mix it up a little bit and I've I've chosen a different thread there as well just to add a little bit of variety 
and I thought it was looking a little bit bare and I thought we could make use of those leftover threads so you can see that little jumble of thread there that's all of the ends of threads from the stitching that I've already done on this piece and I thought we could have a play around with some sashiko stitching or boro stitching or canther so sashiko and boro are japanese stitching styles canther originates in india but they're they're very similar in a lot of ways so canther literally means rags and it's a way of making fabric out of scraps of other fabrics and much like boro stitching from japan you piece together little bits of fabric and you just work over them in lines of running stitch quite close together and it creates a sort of quilted puckered new fabric that you can then make use of and so i'm just going to use all those thread ends that i've got to add in some lines of running stitch and just add a little bit more texture and stitched decoration to the surface of this little piece that I'm working on so I'm just working across in a line of running stitch there and much like last week's piece this is all about now just looking at what you've stitched and judging where you need to add more where has got plenty of stitch and so this is the finished result so I've got my couple of areas of needle weaving there this is the running stitch that I've added in. Got my needle weaving there. And I've put in some little lines of cross stitch here and there as well because I, I thought we needed echoes of that herringbone band. And I, I really like the way this has turned out. It's a really simple piece. It's not like anything we've really done before. It's much more along the lines of slow stitching but I think it showcases our stitches really well. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Quite a simple piece in a lot of ways but I did have quite a lot of fun playing around damaging fabrics and then putting them back together. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you create. Do share your creations at hashtag FSH winging it and so we can see them all together. You could also add hashtag FSH winging it 41. Have loads of fun with this piece. If you've enjoyed it, do give us a like. And if you want to do another piece like this, I will link a video down here to something similar and I'll put a video up here that's best for you. If you'd like to subscribe, click on our logo here and it makes it really easy for you. So have tons of fun with this piece and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.